Hello and welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance and this is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. So who is the Awakening Woman? Well, she's a woman who's seeking a greater possibility in her reality and she's looking for solutions. She knows to be awakened is not a lofty ideal but it's a necessity. If she can transform herself, then she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. This week's Her Conversations guest is Courtney Amundsen. She's a highly prodigious musician and author. And what fascinates me the most about Courtney is that she's a channeler. And it was this channeled wisdom that formed the content for her first book, Teachings from God. Now, I've always found the concept of channeling fascinating. And I have to admit that I was initially nervous about channeling when I first found out all about it. But as I started to listen to more channeled messages from Abraham Hicks, Seth, Bashar, it was clear that whatever my thoughts about the way the message was coming through, the truth could not be denied. It made absolute perfect sense. So as you listen to our conversation, you'll get to understand what it feels like for Courtney physically when you're channeling, uh, the difference between trusting and knowing as well, and how in a way we're actually all channels ourselves. And then as an extra special special treat. Courtney will then guide us through a powerful meditation with a special channeled message for all of us. Needless to say that that part of the message and that part of the podcast is not for you unless you can be in a relaxed space. So as always I begin each of the conversations by asking my guests this question. HER is an acronym for higher energetic resonance. When do you feel at your most HER? I feel in a lot of ways. And I think um, what I've been trying to embody with this, with this um, higher energetic resonance, and everyone says it a different way. And Mm -hmm. I've, I've been trying to embody it as me and not as a separate part of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's something that, especially, you know, in the spiritual community, we talk a lot about meditation and how to access higher um, states and and for me it's yes and also we're connected to that Mm -hmm. and um we are that and it's just about it's just about consciously becoming that in in more uh you know in more moments than not in our everyday lives um but for me i you know i i feel it with music when i'm playing music and and um, something that I find is so important is having having that daily practice or ritual for yourself and whatever form that may be, you know, it might be a, a daily walk through the woods. In the summer, I take my barefoot walks through the woods and and that's a moment of, of embodying that as well. So there's so many different, you know, everyone has a different way of doing that, but I think it's that moment of, of becoming the stillness and and opening to a bigger part of you that's beyond your ego beyond your mind beyond you know it's it's the spirit of us it's the foundation of us the source of us and um i think you know that that's what people call channeling in in Mm -hmm. essence is really that to me and i'm trying to to help people to understand that that's it's natural. It's normal. You know, it's not weird. It's not new age. It's not whatever label we might put it on. Mm. Um, so for me, it's just, it's just embodying your, your highest expression. And, and, you know, it's, I experience it in nature. I think a lot (laughs) when I connect with the earth, when I connect with the trees or, um, the rocks or the lakes around me, I have a lot of lakes around me. And um, especially these days in music and, um, and sound is, sound is incredible for that. And as a musician yourself, you know that, you know, sound is just one of those sort of tuning forks that really Mm -hmm. align us super, super quickly. Um, So those are sort of my daily practices and how I experience that. Beautiful about you and how you got to this point that you're doing the work that you're doing and you're writing the books and you're in this space 
Mm -hmm. what's, what's your journey to get to this point so far? Yeah, it's a, a lot of things that sort of collaborated together to create where I am. And, and of course, that's, I think, everyone's story. <laughs> you know, it's not one thing, it's many things that add mm -hmm. up. But, um, you know, for me, I sort of always had a yearning to um, be of service in a way to do something for for um, the world that would be healing and helpful and uh, you know I didn't always have the words to describe that when I was younger but I I knew that I wanted to to do that and I um, I grew up in a very nurturing environment where art and music and and um, play and nature they were all very central part of of my experience on a daily basis. And um, as I got older, I started to sort of listen to um, <laughs> what my mom was doing in reference to her sort of spiritual path. And um, she started learning Qigong and mm -hmm. I started sort of becoming interested and in learning the meditations. And that was really where I think my spiritual life started to blossom. And I started to um, find those yearnings, um, sparked within me. And, and that was because of my teacher, Master Lin, Master Chun mm -hmm. Lin, who's the founder of Spring Force Qigong. And so it was through him that I started to meditate and I started to have some really beautiful visions and experiences and, um, it felt supernatural. And I just wanted to do that all of the time and, and spend as much time in that community as I could. And um, that led me to find other teachers. And I, um, I started listening to Abraham Hicks and mm -hmm. that was again, my mom's prompt. And, um, but I, I felt that desire, that pull to, to listen to certain things. And, um, you know, I think it's just about following that direction of, of where your pull is. And I didn't have the answers and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, definitely uh didn't think I wanted to be like any of those people I just I felt called to it and um you know I, I followed those I followed those little those little stepping stones along the way and then I had an experience myself of channeling which um did take me quite by surprise and it also felt very natural but um I was 16 at the time when when it happened for the first time and and um Basically, I just felt this unconditional love and this um, angelic presence come through me and really just embody me. And um, it was so big. And so, you know, it just, you know, you know what's happening. It, it, it wasn't up for um, debate on what was happening. I just, I could feel it. I knew it. And that type of love, you can't mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went to my computer and I just, I sort of surrendered and I, I said, you know, um, whatever you have to say, I'm, I'm listening. And I, I let go and my fingers started to type and that's how my first book started. And um, that became a very, uh, an immersion experience. I'll say it that way. It was, you know, very much, I was a conduit. I was letting it happen. And, you know, I'd be up a lot during the night, <laughs> all hours of the day, you know, receiving this information. And um, it was very beautiful and it awakened me in a lot of ways. So that's how it started. And now it's just evolved and I've matured in it in so many ways. I've learned so many ways from, from, um, from that love um, of the universe that um, came through me and, and, um, I'm just still following the path, seeing where it takes me. And, and um, yeah, it's sort of surreal. <laughs> yeah. and, and like you said, you came from a very nurturing background in that mm -hmm. you were kind of exposed to spiritual practices. People were open to your artistic um, talents and they could, they could notice them and give you a safe space for you to actually explore them. And and really delve into your talent so that you could really get into them really early and just allow it to be expression. Um, and I'm sure you realize that for most people, the opposite is true. So mm -hmm. if they have a talent, unless they have 
talented parents or parents can spot that it usually goes unnoticed and becomes suppressed. And then especially then if they have to go through maybe, you know, decades of their life and they get deep into adulthood before they start to really feel the pull or call of spirit or not even being able to identify it. If someone's been through that, they've been through a lifetime of not having that freedom so early on. How can they recognize that these are not the same voices that that uh, most people would poo poo? You know, they've spent their life just pushing things aside, and then now they're getting this feeling or this voice, or they're getting guided, but it's going to mean a complete change of everything around them. How do they know that mm. this is the voice to follow? Because you feel it, you yeah. don't question it at that point. I feel. Um, a lot of times, you know, people come to me for a private reading and they'll, you know, the number one question is, what is my life path? And a lot of times um, people are in big transitions when they're asking that question, mm -hmm. because it's in the moments when you're asking that you feel like there's shift happening, I think. And, um, you know, the big thing is, is people feel like they have to, <clears throat> that it's blind trust. And that when they say yes to something, they're jumping off a cliff with no, you know, no parachute. And the opposite is true. Um, when we follow, you know, the calling that that we we feel that is that helps us to blossom. What is our passion? What um, feels easy and effortless to us? And mm -hmm. I think the number one tip that um has been coming through with my clients when I'm doing readings for for people is tuning into the body's wisdom and being able to help that person really guide that person step by step into listening to the body because we do have all the answers within us and we are being presented with um you know so many very obvious you know very obvious uh um, signs when, when something is in alignment or not. And I think it's only not obvious when we have, uh, turned off that voice unconsciously, mm -hmm. when we, we don't pay attention to that inner voice. So it's sort of just refining that, that, um, communication system, that internal guidance system and being able to feel, you know, and it's, it's e as easy as, you know, practicing, you know, going into the grocery store and, and what does this feel like around me? What, what energy do I feel when I'm in this place? Does it feel good? Does it feel bad? I mean, really, it, we have to sort of challenge ourselves to do that kind of simple little exercises um, to become more in tune. And then when it gets to the, the larger things, instead of asking other people, like, you know, making pros and cons lists about what should I do? And, and, you know, getting in that scrambled sort of mindset, we can really, we can quiet ourselves and we can, we can feel the answer. And when it feels in alignment, it feels good. There may be some fear, mm -hmm. but don't confuse that with, with the wrong, because um, sometimes we have to ease our way into things that, that are, uncomfortable but we we know our right we feel our right um so you know i think it it does take trust but actually you know what i should i should say is um something really beautiful came through last week and the phrase was um you don't have to trust you just have to know mm. and i really loved that because trust trust um indicates that again that you know like we're jumping off the cliff onto the un into the unknown and and you know we, we have a knowing we have a knowing we have a we have the answers right within us so it's just about sort of tuning into that and and feeling it and um again you know like <laughs> it's such a personal thing everyone has a different story but i find that even with the biggest decisions that I've had to make and, 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 um, you know, it's not about the mind. It's about the body. It's about tuning in to, to that guidance system. Mm -hmm. And there it's super, super easy. And, 
And that voice is, is loud once we just listen. And it's amazing how little, um, how little it takes to get people into that space once they just quiet down. Mm-hmm. Once they quiet down, it's like, oh, there it is. And, and I knew that too. Most people will say I knew that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's an unveiling. It's not a, it's not a seeking. It's an unveiling to me. Just slipping up there already and it's moving out of the way. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that it? Yeah. Um, and I just want to, you talk about channeling and I know initially when I first heard about channeling and it was this like Abraham Hicks was one of the first things that I came into and then um, going behind I actually read one of the Seth books as well so for me it was this kind of big like what is this channeling thing it was almost like approaching it with like it's it's so big it's so scary to a point it sounded like it's something really spooky Mm -hmm. Um, how would you explain to somebody what channeling is what are you channeling and why there's nothing to fear around channeling Mm -hmm. well channeling to me I mean the definition has definitely changed as I have changed too you Mm -hmm. know I I used to think of it that same way too like it was sort of weird it was very cool it it helped people it healed people um, it gave people peace of mind, but I, I didn't always really understand it until I experienced it. And um, for me, what I have come to define it as is just tuning into the higher version of myself mm. that's connected to all that is. And that's the point that um, source energy you know, there's no separation between source energy and us as human beings. And we feel that connection. We don't just know the connection, we feel the connection. Mm-hmm. And it's a remembrance of coming home. It's a, it's a knowing of who you truly are beyond this body, beyond this mind. And it's an opportunity to just uh, be in that flow, be in that flow where um, you're, you're totally in the present moment. You're receiving, um, the highest inspired thought that your vocabulary can comprehend even beyond my vocabulary words that I've never used before. You know, they come through They're They're part of me. And it's, it's like, um, opening the curtain to, um, how do I say this? There was a, there was a good metaphor in my first book about how we're kind of like actors on the stage and there's like a puppet behind the curtain that is you know working its magic and the audience doesn't see that it only sees um you know the finished product you know the polished performance and it's that's sort of that's sort of how we work too is we're sort of the the actors on the stage and and the puppets so to speak the movement of us is the higher part of us it's it's the source that runs through us so we're always connected Mm. but um we don't always tune into that or become aware of it and um so it's like that and it's not scary because it's who we really are there's nothing scary about that it's you know that's what i find is so humorous you know it's just at that point where it's funny to me when people get scared about it because i'm like who wouldn't want to experience this? Mm. You know, people go to therapy. They're looking for the answers. People go and find a job because they're looking for the answers or, or they'll get addicted to substances because they're looking for the answers. But then it's scary when you actually find the answers (laughs) and it's real (laughs) and it's authentic and it comes from within us. So there's this observation, misconception that we, that it's outside of us and it's not. And people have a difficult time coming into that um empowerment that we are we are the answers we are the conduit we are um you know part of that source a um you know a a string of that source so um it's really not you know it's not weird to me anymore and i don't talk about it like it like it's weird either (laughs) <laughs> which shows shows where I'm at with it um but 
you know, my voice doesn't get strange. My face doesn't get strange. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel that that's just so, um, you know, I honor everyone for the way that they do it in their own way. And we, we all have a different, um, a different path and a different, uh, you know, what we're delivering, but Mm -hmm. For me, it's about it's about expanding it to people of of from everywhere, of all backgrounds, of all religions, to be able to use the information to better themselves and mm-hmm. in their own connection. So it has nothing to do with a specific God, specific spirit. Um, it's just about helping people to connect in a deeper way to life. Mm-hmm. For me, and then. Um... Just it's a question that I've always been curious about when people are channeling as well, especially when they they do take on a different voice or a different stance or something like that. It's is it a different vibration that you're feeling if you're channeling from universal consciousness or if you're channeling from maybe entities from different dimensions or mm. different times or yeah? definitely it's definitely different. Um, and I can say I've only experienced that probably a handful of times. Mm. Um, but it, it depends because when I work with people, um, one-on-one it, the information, the energy that comes through is for them and their intention and what they're, um, trying to, um, what they're trying to invocate in that experience. So, I've had experiences before where, um, you know, information came through from, uh, you know, a loved one from, you know, that, that has passed and, um, it wasn't the intention of mine or anything, but as I'm surrendering and, um, I ask for the highest light and the highest vibration to guide them into that experience. And I just let go. So sometimes that happens, but, um, when you know when it's just me sort of channeling on my own or or if i'm doing something for a group of people it's it's so broad it's so broad it has no um it has no judgments no ego no fear no bias it's incredibly loving Mm -hmm. and understanding of um humanity Um, it's humorous at times Mm. it's really cute (laughs) and um, it's uh, just the best metaphor is used the best metaphor is to help us and I'm just very relatable Mm. and very easy and and people feel very held just held and they feel recognized they feel seen so it's broader it's so much broader and um, you know, I can't explain that as much as you feel the difference, you feel Mm -hmm. the difference. So instead of a personality, instead of a um, certain, a story associated, you know, it's, it's broad, it's vast, it's universal. So that's sort of the the feeling, but it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. And if someone wanted to start to be receptive to that kind of knowledge what 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 steps that it can take what kind of mindset can they get themselves into if they're they're like okay I'm not afraid of it but I want to now be a receiver of that and understand what's coming through how Mm -hmm. can they prepare themselves for this yeah well (laughs) there's a joke that that they're always saying to us uh humans and it's you know there's no there's no 12-step process like get over that and (laughs) and it's funny because it seems like we are always looking for that you know what are the tools what are the ways you know and it comes down to to asking Mm -hmm. we ask for what we what we want and we invest in that in that um relationship with our divine and I say divine because you can put any word on it that you want to you know it can be Jesus it can be Buddha it can be Lao Tzu it can be whoever you want that you connect to and that's the point is that it's about your connection it's not about mine it's not about yours it's about it's you know it's about 
every single person in their own, their own spiritual connection. So they, you know, you have to invest in that relationship. And by that, I mean, you know, you, you ask for what you need and you surrender and you, um, you know, for me, it was just a lot of investing in meditation for myself. And that can look different for, for every person. Mm. Um, but it was a lot of asking, like, how can I deepen? How can I, how can I understand this about myself better? I was always asking, like, how can I understand myself better? What, what can I do? How can I deepen? What can I, um, what can I unveil to myself that I haven't yet? And it's a constant asking of that because it's, it's layers upon layers upon layers of just unpeeling one by one and sort of getting deeper. And that's life. It's just a constant state of that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you get used to that and you just, you try to just move deeper into um, your life experience with awareness and ask for assistance, you know, because you're not, you're not here alone. So don't act like it basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we often do. And yeah. you do, um, you do frequently, you do energy updates and I'm curious as to what are you feeling into? How are you feeling the energy change and knowing that the energy is going this way it we we can kind of use it to assist us to do that or the energy is going this way maybe we should mm -hmm. exercise caution on certain things how what what are you reading into when you're when you're able to kind of interpret the way that energy is coming through well it's no different than when I'm channeling any other time so I have no idea what's going to happen um mm -hmm. I of course observe what I'm feeling in different times and you know I feel like wow this has been a crazy week or or I'm feeling pretty good this week or whatever, but I'm not really intuiting anything larger than that. So a good, um, you know, one of the reasons why I do the energy updates is it helps me too. You know, I don't, I don't know what's going on half the time. And so when I channel, um, and for those that don't know, I do these um, energy updates on my Facebook live so I go live on Facebook and, and I just, I start channeling and, and my intention is just, what do we need to know for this week? And I guide people into a short meditation before the channeling and um, help people to just get in that receptive place. And um, we just, we let go and we sort of meditate together and um, I'm sort of just listening, you know, it's, it's sort of the process of channeling. It's like, you know that you're speaking, but you're also, you're also listening in a mm -hmm. sense. So I'm aware of what's happening, but it, it comes from sort of a backseat place. So um, it doesn't feel like me per se, but I'm still there. So I, I'm just curiously listening to the information and go, oh, that was really great. Or, you know, I didn't know about that. And um, so it's always sort of new to me in the moment. And um while I'm telling, you know, I might feel, feel certain aspects of that or, um, you know, feel deeper into something that I might not otherwise, but, um, it's really, uh, no different than channeling any other time, just with the focus of, um, being more current for that specific week. Mm -hmm. So it'll, you know, bring us through, you know, different techniques, whatever we need to do to best take care of ourselves um, for that that current week. And it, it always helps people. So it's pretty cool. And there's an increasing amount of fear and separation if we are aware of what's happening in the world and, and people's reaction to us, um, especially if you're in an environment where you tend to be more connected or more in tune, but yet everyone else around you is really kind of swept into the fear narrative that's going on around. How can you best hold a safe space for yourself that may or you know may be able to kind of ripple out and and kind of calm or, or be a sense of calm when you've got everyone else mm -hmm. around you kind of, you know, every week something else is happening and then mm -hmm. another thing and then another thing. So it there's an acceleration it seems of bad news and fear related 
stories yeah. and feelings how can we if we know that it's a story that we can choose to buy into and not buy into um and yet our friends and our family may not be privy to that way of looking at things but obviously they don't want to hear it from you how can you hold a space what can you do to really just ground and then kind of radiate something out mm -hmm. that would be like the beacon in in your community or in your peer group in your family home well I think uh, sort of the answer already came out in what you're saying is that you know mm -hmm. it it does come down to to us and we can't always control what our family and friends are doing or you know what other people in the world are doing but we can focus on ourselves and we downplay that we downplay that a lot and and how much of an impact we are and um somebody actually asked this um i did an event in in wisconsin um this past weekend and i i did live stream it so there's you guys can um, listen to some of that, but somebody asked a really great question about that, you know, same sort of thing is there's, there's craziness happening in the world and what can we do? How, how do we deal with it? What's happening? Mm -hmm. And um, the answer was about taking time, time for ourselves to, first of all, see the power that we have and, um, be even more diligent about where we use our energy and mm. and um you know for me that was sort of a different message that i hadn't heard in in that way before because you know i i hear a lot you know you're in the perfect place at the perfect time and and everything is going according to plan from the the higher perspective and mm -hmm. that's still true and yet it doesn't feel compassionate it doesn't feel always helpful for us to hear a message like that and you know so they helped us to to understand in that channeling you know we throw around the term light worker a lot <laughs> and what does that mean and how can we truly embody that and it was you know what is your practice what is your passion what is you know what is your way that you you embody the as you would say the higher energetic resonance what is that for you and put your energy there you know mm -hmm. let's stop talking about all the reasons why other people aren't doing it and why don't we do it mm -hmm. because the moment that we get spun up in their story we're not being a light worker we can't claim that title anymore mm -hmm. you know it's it's so beyond you know uh, how spiritual we think we are or how many, you know, like Eckhart Tolle books we've read, you know, it's beyond that. Now we're being challenged. We are being challenged to start embodying, you know, not just teaching, but embodying this. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very, very diligent with ourselves. And that's something that I'm finding to be very hard <laughs> mm -hmm. is, you know, just because I, you know, this is something that I'm trying to learn too. I don't have all the answers, but you know the anxieties are intense and you know it's it's my own journey right now to navigate that and and what is my own personal practice for me right now i get up and i i make breakfast and i do my kirtan practice for like an hour and um you know i i have a lot of quiet time to myself because that's what renews me I know what renews me and what doesn't renew me. I spend time around people that help me thrive and support me and see me in my highest expression and are giving to me. And that's important and that fuels people. And even just when you show up, you know, we that was the other teaching is just, you know, it's it's not about what we say, it's not about what we do, it's it's how we show up like fully, fully in ourselves. So we have to make that our number one priority and everything else is sort of, you know, background noise in my opinion right now, because that's how we're helping the world. And certain people are going to be the people that are on the front line that are, you know, the ones that are literally helping the people that are in despair, that are hurt, that are stranded, whatever it may be. And then there's other people that are going to be in their homes but they're but they're doing their work too 
So it's time to not judge the ways that we, that each of us help differently, but to just to, to know it for yourself and to do it and trust in that. And that's, that's, that's where we help, you know? Brilliant. Perfect. And this is the part that I've been really looking forward to as well. Um, Courtney has uh, said that she will help guide us through a beautiful meditation and I'll just leave it in your hands and you can, you can take the real thing. Okay. So I just start out with some, some deep, gentle breaths and as we do that, we inhale through the nose and we exhale through the mouth. And as you inhale, you imagine this beautiful golden energy filling your entire body from every, every cell in your body, from every direction in the universe, this golden light just flying in. And as you exhale, just imagining any excess energy, anything that is not serving you right now, any worries, any fears, any stressors, imagining that as black smoke leaving your body, again, from all directions and going back to the ends of the universe. So I'll just do that visualization for a few moments. And gently bring your focus to your heart space, visualizing a bright golden sun shining brightly in the heart, feeling this warmth, feeling the love there, feeling this light as it is expanding from your chest Seeing this light rippling out, becoming even bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter as it expands from your heart, encompassing your entire chest, encompassing your entire torso. and then encompassing your entire body. So feeling this bubble of light as it is surrounding you from head to toe, emanating from the heart and shining so brightly. And just let yourself let go completely in this love. Allow your shoulders to drop, imagining a, some beautiful hands on your shoulders, just allowing you to completely surrender, completely let go. And then we bring a gentle smile to our face because S-M-I-L-E stands for Start My Internal Love Engine. So we smile and we open our hands to face the sky. And we just let go. And from this place, where we are completely letting go. We can now call upon the energy of the universe 
or your God or your master to help us in this meditation to gain whatever insights we might need and to be open to receiving as well. So you can say from the heart, dear master or dear God, dear universe, please help me. to heal on all levels, to hear whatever I need to hear in this moment that is for my highest and best good. Please help me to open my body to the wisdom that is there. And as you help me in this meditation, I'm going to bring more love and healing and kindness and joy to my family, to my friends, and to my community, and even to the world. And I thank you. And feel how this openness in the heart changes your body, changes your entire energy about you. And just notice this. As you continue to focus here on the heart, we'll begin a short, short little channeling. So just continue to focus on creating deep, open breaths, surrendering deeper into the body, and completely letting go. Just listening, imagine you're being held by this love. Dear ones, there is so much love for you. And it is a time for you to discover this in a deeper way. Because the time for you is now. You are not only discovering your healing capacity and how quickly you can change your body's chemistry. But also you are discovering that the connection to your higher awareness, to your highest attunement is so easy and so effortless. Because you are your own greatest healer and teacher. You are the one you have been looking for. You have everything that you are needing. So in order to deepen into this experience of union that you may be feeling now, that you may be experiencing now. It is important to honor this, this temple that is your physical body because it is the conduit in so many ways, in so many shapes, in so many forms for this communication to become a bigger part of you, a bigger part of your everyday experience.
So we ask you to pay attention to the energy, the thoughts that you are putting into your body, the food you are putting into your body, how you are loving your body. how you are clothing your body and feeling your most radiant self. And you would say, this is a very mundane conversation. How do my clothing truly relate to my spirituality? We are saying it is all part of the same in the sense that we want you to embody every piece of you that makes you uniqueness, that makes you feel fullness, that makes you feel in your power, in your strength, in your wisdom. So every moment that you have to, to be gentle with yourself, to honor yourself, to bring beauty to yourself, we want you to do it. Indulge in this ability to take care of your, your body and your spirit. And the way that you can do this truly is by remembering that it is not selfish to do this. You have been under the impression that because your life may be fast paced, because there are so many tasks to complete, that there is not time for you. There is not time to feed yourself. There is not time to, to clothe yourself in beautiful, beautiful things. There is not time to, to indulge in, in the beauty of words and how that expression is so powerful. There is not time to, to admire who you are, who you have become. There's not time to have talents, to have passions, to have hobbies. You know what there is not time for is mindlessness. So we want you to invest in yourselves and in every area that you can. And it doesn't come from a place of simply buying yourselves things by treating yourselves to things with no meaning. It has to do with true self-care, which is, is honoring the moment in which you are simply with yourself and you are listening to your truest desires and you are investing time in those things. That's what we are suggesting for you. Because as you do this, not only do you feel full, not only do you feel that there is more time in the day, not only do you feel that you have a renewed sense of energy and motivation, but your physical channels are open, open, open. Your body's chemistry begins to rewire itself based on your new purpose. So energy flows where you send it. And when you are unclear, your energy is unclear. When you are scattered, you surround yourself with scatteredness. When you become decisive about who you are, who you deserve to be, who, you, who deserves to be in your presence, then all of a sudden, there is magic, there is synchronicity, 
there is abundance around and within you. So you've heard that it all starts with you and ends with you, but it is to take this practice and to truly start practicing it. Take this teaching and start practicing it. So if your practice is you like to paint and you would say, well, I like to do it, but it does not bring me money or it does not bring me abundance in any form. There is not time for that. And yet you feel full when you are doing it. And yet you feel abundant when you are doing it. And yet you feel connected. So it's time to follow in the direction of what truly makes you feel full. And to do it for all of the right reasons, which is only that it makes you feel good. and to do it simply for you. And when you follow in this direction of doing only the things that are feeling good to you, feeling in alignment, feeling that they are supporting you in your own magical creations, then you are in tune and in alignment with that to appear and surround all around you. So it's not about figuring out every aspect of your life experience. It's starting with the small things, the little things, and letting that blossom and grow and branch out into many other aspects of you. And what you will discover is it truly is all connected. You can start with putting energy into painting. And all of a sudden you are, you are in alignment with others who are, who are of your same vibrational wavelength, who you might meet and discover you have a connection with. And then all of a sudden you are in a new community and you are making connections and you are making awarenesses and you are opening further and further and further into you. So that's what we want you to understand is it is a ripple effect. It is a constant growing experience and, and blooming experience when you say yes. So say yes to you and you don't have to know what that is yet, but be willing to discover, be willing to be curious, be willing to ask. That is the purpose of this time. And it's all up for you to to ask what it is for you. It is personal for you. Your journey is your journey. But it's full of possibility. It is for each and every one of you. So listen, listen and say yes to that. It is a message that is short, and concise, but also with depth, with trueness. So allow yourself to become curious about it. Just become curious about it. There is great love for you here, as always. And so it is. Just allow yourselves to feel this stillness and in your own time, you can bring your awareness back into your body. Back into the room. Gently opening your eyes and 
I'm gonna close with rubbing our hands together. Interlacing your fingers. And then massaging the face. And then massaging the ears. All parts of the ear. Just want to take one more deep breath. There we go. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you've got a couple of minutes, we just quickly do those closing questions because I know that you have to go. But um, so thank you so much for that. So one question I'd like to know is what is the best piece of advice a woman has given to you? Um, to not be afraid of stepping into myself, I think. Mm -hmm. um, to be powerful, to be bold, um, especially as women, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's this feeling that you sort of have to be in the background. And if you're anything other than that, you know, it's, it's sort of um, uncomfortable at times. And it's something that I think we sort of unconsciously know from a very young age and can't really put a finger on it, but you, you can feel it. So I think for me, just being surrounded by a lot of women who are stepping into themselves and they're, they're not afraid to be powerful and they're not afraid to say what they mean. And mm -hmm. I think that's been really important for me especially in the work that I'm doing and, and being the youngest person that is doing this sort of work um, in a very open way. Mm. Um, you know, I think I was a little worried about being understood or, or um, being valued because I am young and because mm. I, I don't necessarily have a, you know, a degree of sorts, you know, um but for me it's it's about it's about presence and that speaks for itself um and learning that you know from many really amazing women around me um has given me a lot of really powerful tools and i think has shaped me and and how i am now and um how i've been received <laughs> for sure and at the end of the day, truth is truth, you know, wherever it comes from, whether it's coming from a babe or baby or whether it's coming from someone who's, you know, 100 earth years, it's if it, yeah. if it, if it feels like truth, you're just going to take it on board and, yes. and to disregard it because of where it comes from is missing the point, really. Absolutely. Um, and, and with the, the theme, like any female, is there a female that you're around or that you know of that you feel really represents that higher energetic resonance mm. i was i was asking myself this question and i was thinking well i have to pick a famous person obviously and i thought well why, why would i pick that it. it's just why would i pick yeah. that because yeah. there's so many people surrounding me that do embody it and and um you know, I think about all the people that inspire me a lot, and mm -hmm. a lot of them are women, you know, and, um, you know, I think there's so many, <laughs> um, but who came to mind, and it, it is a famous person, but who came to mind today was um, India Ari, and she's mm -hmm. one of my favorite singers of all time, one of my favorite people of all time, and um, the reason why I admire her so much is that she she uses that platform as a public figure, as a musician, um, 
to really embody, you know, what it means to be a light worker. And I, I don't throw around that word, but I mean it intentionally. And she really is that. Mm. And, um, you know, the way that she shows up on Instagram, the way that she shows up on Facebook, the way that she shows up at her shows, it's, it's about connection. It's about mm-hmm. communion. And she brings the spirit in it. She brings um, people into that place. So it's, I think I really admire people that not only embody that, but they help other people to embody that just by being in that presence, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I listen to her album most days, especially the, the song, I Am Light. That's the best one. It's the best one. I know. And, but yeah, she's inspired me so much. And, and, um, but there's so, there's so many other people, you know, too, Mm -hmm. of course. But, um, you know, I, I find, I think she came up because, you know, that's been sort of a, a daily thing for me is, you know, listening to that song and, and, um, she's she's one of those female figures that really embodies that really does and um also shows the struggle Mm. and not not in a way that is you know shameful but this is part of my strength this is part of my beauty Mm. and um helping people to to embody that and and that's part of a spiritual journey so i i admire people that um don't make it look like you know, just a, you know, beautiful meditative experience, you know, it's, it's also a lot of times the really painful things and, um, honesty in that is, is also what I think is part of that embodying of, of higher, um, you know, higher, higher wisdom. So yeah, definitely, definitely a, a, inspiration for me it's a good one and um you may have said this before a little bit but just your favorite self-care ritual your favorite practice to mm. is that an everyday thing i tend to always go to music or nature those, mm. those are my two um top things um like i said you know like in the summer i'm always barefoot i barely ever wear shoes <laughs> and i'm just you know in the earth and that's one of my favorite things to do um it feels so so grounding to me and um I'm very lucky to live in a very like open space a lot of nature around me Mm -hmm. um or or else you know kirtan uh that's become I sort of mentioned it quickly but that's become a really just amazing thing for me in the last year um and definitely a practice for me that I think will uh, sustain me for a very very long time um but sound sound is is so incredible and I don't even understand it you know (laughs) I don't understand it but I I feel it and um for me that's something that I feel is essential for not only my physical health but you know my spiritual uh my spiritual self and um it's a way that I can I can quiet the mind instantly Perfect. and um what's next for you and, and where where can we find you online what's next for me um well i'm going to be i'm going to be in a documentary this fall mm. um called they call us channelers and so that is going to be uh, we're going to be filming that the later part of november um so that's going to be very exciting um and more information about that soon um but then i'm working on my next book i'm editing that and um and yeah you can stay up to date my website is teachingsfromgod.com and i also am very active on youtube and facebook and instagram Mm -hmm. so those are good places to find me you know i'm i'm always on there i'm always talking to people so um (laughs) and i'm doing your dog as well (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what's happening there (laughs) (laughs) that was a really good one 
that was perfect. Well, I know that you've got a rush and you've got a call to make, but I just want to say that I really appreciate your time. I want to say thank you for coming on to this new project with me and being part of this new inspiration that I've had to kind of bring this higher energetic resonance story and experience out and really step out for myself and also be part of the amazing people that I know that are able to come and, and, and share their perspective on it. So mm. I really appreciate it and really so thank you so much. I, I feel very connected to your vision too and I think it's important for people to to um, have these conversations. So mm. so thank you for having me on as well. No problem. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so thank you once again for listening to this week's her conversations and just wondering how you're feeling after that amazing meditation and channeled message with courtney what i'd really like to um start to get is some feedback you know you can contact me via my website so the website address is carolmaywittick.com and just to spell my name it's c-a-r-o-l m-a-e-w-h-i-t-t-i-c-k or you can find me on instagram facebook or twitter at kazmic and that's c-a-z-m-i-c-k so get in contact with me there follow me on instagram or twitter or find me on facebook and we can start a conversation outside of the podcast also just to make sure that you get the up-to-date version in your device just press subscribe and i'll see you next week thanks for listening